Uh, many of you know that I have a, a very special needs, medically fragile son, Nicholas, who many of you have seen Little Man, the documentary that I did about him. And I've always wanted to try to show people who my son is. And when we cast Kale, who feels kind of like my son as well, my buddy, um, there couldn't have been a better, better person on the planet to play my son's role, essentially, and become... Um, this incredible beacon of love and hope and light, um, which is what I feel like my son is. And the hard part for me is, is that oftentimes when I've been out with Nicholas in public, people just turn away. They look away from our kids because I think sometimes they're just uncomfortable and don't know what to do. And other times, you know, they just, it's too fearful for them. And the big thing I wanted to do is make sure that our kids are not invisible. And I think Kale is like the most fantastic ambassador from the special needs community to sort of Thank present you. that to everybody. So. Thank you so much. It's a great story, actually. <laughs> so um, I heard a commercial on the radio to come to um, a hotel and meet some casting agents. And from there, I did a acting show called IPOP. And I did a lot of meetings and stuff. And I auditioned for a Nickelodeon role for a general audition, and the next thing I was knew, I was on Nicky, Ricky, Dicky, and Don on Nickelodeon. And well, wow, was, that sounds like a great title, Nicky, Dicky, Licky, and Don. What was it? <laughs> Nicky, Ricky, Dicky, and Don. Oh wow! <laughs> okay, oh, I haven't seen that, so uh, but I'm going to have to look they're it up. They're quadruplets. Oh wow! Cool. So had you had you been acting at home? I mean, how did you know that you were interested in that? So um, that was my that was my very first thing, actually. Wow. Fantastic. Well, you, you've been can't become, I mean, I've got a question here from, from Lisa and she, she says this, you know, you've become a little heartthrob within the Willex fandom. We, we, we adore you. And, and, and she's asking, what was it like to work with Zoe Ventura? It was, it was undeniably awesome. I had so much fun with Kayla and Zoe, um, I loved her accent. Her, it was amazing. I just loved talking to her, just to hear her accent. It was amazing. And we, we just had a lot of fun behind the scenes. We told jokes. We had dance parties. It was, it was amazing. Uh, when I was little, my mom and my grandparents used to play a lot of the old Hollywood films with Gene Kelly and also Michael Jackson, and they would notice I was always trying to mimic what they were doing. They put me in dance uh, at the age of two, and it just kind of sticked. It, it, I loved it. It was never, they never had to force me. And then as I got older, I started getting more serious about it and, and realized that I could make a career out of it. Um, and they were always super supportive. They did everything they could to make sure I was getting the best training I, I possibly could, getting in front of the right people. And then when So You Think started, we always watched it as a family. And then when I was 18, I was finally old enough and everyone around me was like, you should audition, you should audition. And I was like, there's no way I'm gonna make this show. There's absolutely no way. Um, but I went and auditioned and I was, very, very lucky. And I was able to experience that show. And from there, it, it kind of just opened up a lot of doors in the dance world for me. Oh, wow. So what's your favorite sort of uh, style of dance? Is it, I mean, there's ballet in the, in the film, there's some contemporary. I'm just yeah. interested to know what kind of dance your, is your passion. Um, I love, I love jazz and I love contemporary. Mm -hmm. Um, jazz, of course, is a little bit more higher tempo, more yeah. like performance uh, driven. And then the contemporary is a lot more storytelling, which I also love because yeah. I love to act. Um, the casting um, is always, always, always about chemistry. And some people know this, but we had three McKinsey's prior to getting Zoe. And we were always trying to find the McKenzie first instead of um, Samantha because she's theoretically the, the lead proper. And so that's the way you sort of match it. But I, I was so, sort of so sick of how the business was working inside our industry that I talked to um, the producer that I was working at the time and my casting director. And I said, I just, I know Kayla is the right Samantha. So I really want to basically say Kayla is Samantha. And now let's cast chemistry for her. 
And that's what we ended up doing. And we called in uh, four actresses. I think it was four actresses that day, Kayla. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Zoe was the first one in. And <laughs> it was like pretty much all, all over. You know, we made them kiss and stuff. And it was pretty much all over from that moment. We could see that everything was working properly. Right. <laughs> that was it. Wow. Okay. I, I, and you just talked a little bit there about you know, the mechanics of getting a film made. I just want to bring Lisa in, the producer. I don't know where she is, if she can- She's right here. Yeah. Right hey. here. Uh, okay, you're not popping up on my screen, but that's probably because of my view or something. Oh, but, um, yeah. You are now. Um, I just wanted to ask you, because I've, I've, you're part of the Silver, the Silver Crew or oh, something? The Silver Tribe. The Silver, Tribe. The silver tribe that's it okay so tell us a little bit about what the silver tribe is and how how you're involved with that and as I understand it you get in you know you're producing independent lesbian film tell us a little bit about how <laughs> how that happened and, uh, well, and, and some of the you know the hurdles that you have to get over in order to get a film like this made and what we as fan bases people your audience can do if we can do anything to help Ah, that's a lot. Uh, well, the Silver Tribe is this phenomenal group of women. Actually, you know, I think I saw Chiquita's name down here somewhere. Yeah. Where, where is she? I think she's here. Where is Chiquita? Part of the Silver Tribe. Okay, she's got a name a bit like mine then, because I'm just... Yeah, in fact, it's so like, funny. I, I, I rarely find anyone with my name. My name. I'm here, no video, she said. Uh, where is your video, babe? <laughs> And she's like, I'm not she's deciding. Talking. It's okay. But oh, um, she's it's gone. Anyway, so is she another Rita. one of the Silver Tribe? Is this? Yeah, it is. It is. yeah. Okay. She's part of the Silver Tribe and the executive producer on the film as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, welcome to you, ja, ja, Jacinta, Jacinta. And she, she's in Australia. So oh. a number of these women in the Silver Tribe came from all over, all over the world, actually, to come onto the set um, in Pine Mountain. And they're all Nicole's connections um, and came in to support her in this film. And we kind of, it was kind of an interesting, it was fabulous because uh, she has history, various history with, with each person in the, the Silver Tribe. And so we all provided a certain level of support through the whole journey of filming. And they were amazing. These women who came from all over, they just basically helped take care of everything that needed to be taken care of. Wow. Because there's so much to do on a film set, especially when you have so little money. Um, and they all, you know, jumped in and just took care of us. <laughs> yes, they were amazing. <laughs> right? And so, yeah. so does that mean that you, Lisa, took, you know, what you were on set, you took quite a sort of hands-on producer role being, being around or...? Oh, yeah. And I think because I was also one of the more local folks. So I worked very closely with Nicole from the very beginning with the script and, and on and on. And then when it came time to go out to Pine Mountain, um, yeah, kind of help uh, facilitate and coordinate getting everybody there. And then while we were there, moving around from set to set and, and uh, you know, and then we all stayed, a lot of us stayed in one big cabin which was phenomenal because at yeah. the end of the day, we could all kind of congregate there and, and, and kind of go yeah, over the day. Yeah, be busy. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like right. a lot of fun. Kale, oh, it was what? A so, so Kale, tell me, what? this Pine Mountain, where is this place? It looked absolutely stunning on, on the footage. In the yeah, it's, the it's in California. It's, it's absolutely stunning. It might be a yeah, it reminds me of Colorado, honestly. Wow! Mm -hmm. And so, so this was filmed uh, up on a mountainside in the middle of in the middle of this mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, Pine Mountain is is just literally like a, a, a blip on the map. If you drive beyond it, you drive into all of the, like completely raw territory that you don't even see another car on for hours and hours and hours. Which so part of California is it? Is it northern? It's just, or? it's just about an hour and a half out of LA. Um, I want to go back to Kayla and I, I mean, just, I mean, some extraordinary scenes that you had to deal with there. And, I, and, I, and I've, I've got a, a question from uh, Lisa, which is, did you and Kayla get together and talk and research about Freddie's um, condition before you started filming? How did you, 
How did you get to grips with that? How did you get insight into the difficulties that Freddie's character had? Um, I got to chat with Kale a little bit about some of the stuff that he has experienced in his real life. Hmm. Um, and I also got the opportunity to talk with Brittany, his mom, and Nicole a ton about their everyday lives and the things that they've gone through and the hardships they've had to deal with. And um, it, I always say it was really important to me that I was able to portray this character very honestly and very truthfully without added drama or added emotion, but really understand and try to, to grasp onto what these people have to deal with all the time. Mm. Um, so there was definitely a lot of chatting and a lot of, I did a lot of research on my own as well, just to understand um, the situation and, and, and more so what people have to go through. So it was, like I said, it was very important for me to fully understand it. It was honestly, um, it was kind of easy because um, there was such, like, it hit me, hit, hit home pretty easily. So it was kind of easy to go through with that and connect with it very well. So I feel like that helped a lot. So. Yeah, yeah, that you, you had that, they had, I mean, the, the connection that you had with Kayla as your mom was, very, very lovely. And I don't know if your mom, your mom is next to you tonight, but. Ma'am, hi. Oh, hey, hey, welcome. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. What's, what's your Brittany. name? Brittany. Brittany, hello. Lovely to meet you, Brittany. Thank you so Thank much you. for, for uh, saying uh, hello. And uh, obviously you, we've just heard from Kayla, you obviously played a part as well very much in the preparation for the film and, and being able to give that insight of being a, a mom in a situation uh, that, that she needed to play a role uh, in relation to. I always say it was two of the scenes. It wasn't a big, explosive, melodramatic, emotional scene. It was a very internal experience that I was sharing just on screen. And I wanted it to come off that way. Like I wanted what I was feeling inside to just spew into the hearts of everyone who is watching it. Um, that was definitely one of the hardest scenes because one, everyone in the room ended up in tears. Um, Again, I wanted to share a story of these are all things that Nicole and Brittany both deal with and have felt at times. And, and you know, it was really important that it came off very truthfully and honest again, because um, I didn't want it to be fake emotion. I didn't want fake tears. I, I wanted it to be real. And so um, it was, there was a lot of prep before that and a lot of work building up to that point. Yeah, I mean, I was, thought you did. A May I just speak to that a minute because it really is one of the one of the killer scenes. That scene really does speak to what Brittany and I deal with with our sons all mm -hmm. the time, and so it's it's uh, one of those things that just Kayla did that six times, and I swear to God, when I was cutting it, it was like Jesus, she like nailed it <laughs> every single time. It was it, it's just an, I just. Every time I see that scene, it, it gets me, Kayla. It just, yeah. Babe. I would have to say me too. <laughs> yeah, right, Brittany? Yes, completely. Yeah. God, we were such a mess. I was lucky enough to choreograph it. Nicole trusted me with that oh, wow. as well, thankfully. And both numbers took around probably six hours to shoot, shoot out. Wow. And I've got a question coming in from Claire. Studevant, um, and that's Nicole. What was your favorite part of the movie? Well, my favorite part of every film I've ever done in my life is this: is the um, blue love dance, is what we call it. it. Just from conceptualization to finally finishing it and, and it working so beautifully is for me the best, the best thing I've done. The scene that I most enjoyed was um, the one I love, cheese raviolis. That one <laughs> has to be my favorite. And yeah. Kayla, did you get any to get to do any ad living, or, or were you strictly on script? Um, I was pretty much on script most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I I have like a, like I like to know what I'm doing. I like to know what I'm talking about. I, you know, I I can improv if I need to, but I I think I steered pretty straight on script lines. 
Um, yeah. um, the question just come in again from Claire Stuyvesant, which is, Kayla, are you doing any other acting projects right now? Or can you tell us what, what, what you're working on? Um, well, currently, Hollywood is in lockdown and everything, mm -hmm. nothing is happening. Um, I'm at home with uh, quarantine with my, my boyfriend and my roommate, and um, we are trying to create things and shoot things because we have some cameras and lighting um, just to keep actively yeah. acting. Um, but the, the most recent things that um, have come out, I mean, this wasn't super recent, but I was... I danced in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is Quentin Tarantino's recent film with mm. Leonardo DiCaprio, wow. um, which is really cool. And then um, I danced in a couple episodes of a show called Penny Dreadful City of Angels, which is airing, it just started airing two weeks ago. Oh, fantastic. And going back to Kale, I know, Kale, that you have just appeared in one of John Legend's videos, Bigger Love. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit yes. about that? How did, how did that happen? So, um, it was a lot of fun. I have, um, a friend of mine who, um, actually suggested me to, um, him and I love her so much and I think she's absolutely amazing and I thank her for that. So that was fun. Um, it was just, it was an amazing film and I had so much fun. And, um, another one of my projects is Endlings. And that is on Hulu. Season one is on Hulu. So oh, wow. you guys should go make, make sure to check that out. It's amazing. And I'm isn't the lead season character. Season two isn't on it? Kim? Huh? Isn't season two on Hulu too? No, That's not yet. Not till oh, the fall. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's a very good question. Well, you know, I mean, because the film industry is still very dominated by, by men. So it's, it is challenging and our voices, you know, need to be heard, but it, it does create a different challenge. Uh, Nicole was working on it, what, seven years? I came in about five years ago. So it was five years in the making. And uh, one of the best things anybody you all can do, because you had asked about that, is just keep putting the word out and, and helping us put the word out about the film and any, any of our projects, right? Well, thank you so much for giving us yeah, your time. Thank you for having with us. Your lovely, with your lovely group of women here. Yeah, yeah. thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, Kayla, thank you so much for joining us. As I said, keep dancing, keep acting. It's wonderful work. And um, enjoy your little dogs while you're in, in lockdown. <laughs> Great pets. Thank you.